Welcome to the Laverne Church of the Brethren's weekly audio message. Here at the Laverne Church of the Brethren, we create a Christian community called by Christ to be inclusive, caring, and peace-minded. We affirm that people of any race, ethnic identity, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability, age, economic status, faith tradition, or life situation are welcome in our congregation. We believe in compassionate service, stewardship of creation, respect for diversity, and nonviolent reconciliation for differences among all people, nations, and faith traditions. We claim no creed but the New Testament as exemplified by the life of Christ. We strive to follow the way of Jesus. And through these efforts, we seek to grow ever closer to the mind and heart of God. And now let us ground ourselves as we enter into today's message. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Finally, siblings, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them and the God of peace will be with you. Years ago, I worked at a mega church. Somewhere in my time serving this church, I learned about a phrase one of the pastors would use with his wife and children. Apparently, no matter what internal conflict or pain this family may have been dealing with in their home, When they pulled up to the church parking lot on Sundays, the dad, who was the pastor, would tell his family this. Okay, time to put on your Sunday face. I can just imagine this picture-perfect family forced to take a moment in their car to transition their posture, to set aside their inner pain, I can imagine them positioning their faces, widening their eyes, and turning the corners of their lips upward to sport a superficial smile, because it was Sunday, and they were the pastor's family, after all. I wonder, could this pastor have been drawing from our text today? Paul does tell the Church of Philippi to rejoice and to think on whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Is Paul proposing superficial optimism and forced joy? Is Paul a dad in a church parking lot admonishing his children to slap on their Sunday faces? Maybe, maybe not. Paul held multiple identities. He was Jewish and he was also Greco-Roman. And like we are influenced by the culture in which we live, Paul too was influenced by the society in which he lived. Stoic philosophers of Paul's day also called on people to rejoice. They often consoled others, not with empathy necessarily, but by trying to remove grief and pain through rational means. This suggestion to turn from pain to pleasant is an example of this rational Stoic thought. So Paul was likely following the Stoics of his time and asking the Philippians to practice joy that isn't based on circumstance. I don't know about you, but I don't like hearing advice from those who haven't lived my reality. Have you been a foster parent? Then please don't dish your favorite parenting advice, especially if it involves sticker charts. It was hard for me to accept advice from friends about um, my heart-wrenching divorce. 
I was much more open to advice from members of my divorce support group. Something different about hearing from those who were traveling the same path that I was. I imagine the same is true for those whose partners or loved ones have passed. The best advice probably comes from those who have walked in their shoes. And we know that justice activists get lots of advice from non-activists on the right way to pursue justice. Wonder how they feel about that. Advice is more palpable from someone who's been through the same difficulties that we've experienced than from someone who sits in ignorant privilege. And, and Paul, he, he does indeed hold his own privilege. He's a man living in a patriarchal society, after all. However, it's important to understand that Paul is writing this letter while he is imprisoned. He knows a thing or two about difficulty, pain, and oppressive systems since he is held captive by the Roman government. The Philippians themselves also suffer at the hands of the Roman Empire. Paul's walked in their shoes and he's asking them to try the same spiritual practice he is choosing amid his own persecution, to rejoice and to think of the good despite the empire's work to squash the Jesus movement. This practice of rejoicing reminds me of racial justice activist Andre Henry. Andre uh, spoke to the necessity of joy when he visited our congregation as a guest preacher. It was during spiritual formation when Andre explained the importance of self-care and joy amid justice work. He talked about how constant stress and negativity has been shown to literally kill nerve endings. Andre also writes about the need for joy in his book called All the White Friends I Couldn't Keep. He, he writes, as much as I say that struggle is necessary for freedom, we must never forget the reason we struggle is so that we can enjoy our lives. We must learn to create room for joy in the struggle. And there are certainly opportunities for that. It's those moments when you dance the wobble in a blocked intersection, it's taking a day at the spa, it's throwing a barbecue with your movement friends. That's what we're doing today, isn't it? A barbecue on the patio with this community of Jesus movement friends. When I listen to Andre and his call to rejoice amid oppressive systems, I think of this congregation and the ways it has found joy in the past. Before my time here, during a season of great LGBTQ plus advocacy within our denomination, our previous pastor, Carol Wise, along with many others, cultivated a moving experience that brought joy to those who participated. They hosted a special service called Wait On In, where many found meaning through ritual, through dance, through removing their shoes and wading through the baptismal waters in this sanctuary. I'd venture to say they created joy. And June is Pride Month. Happy Pride, church. Yeah. <laughs> People from all over are celebrating as a form of protest. And just yesterday, the Envisioning Commission chose to participate in Pomona's, uh, Pomona Pride's Love Wins event in downtown Pomona, where there was a palpable sense of joy. Um, and I, I'm not making this up. Upon leaving uh, the event, my kiddos declared, one of my kiddos declared, that was the most fun thing ever. And I, I was, I was kind of taken back, and I looked at my partner, and I said, better than the time we went to Disneyland? No pause. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there, was, there was music, dancing, food. There was uh, moms giving free hugs, uh, face painting, and more. And while there is much that needs to be accomplished in co-creating equity for all, we see that joy can be found in the midst of the work toward collective liberation. Our church continues to work toward liberation, toward equity, inclusion, and justice. And we have much good to consider, much to rejoice. Many honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, worthy of praise things to think about. I recently posed this question in our Facebook community group. 
What are some things the church has done this year that are worth celebrating? And many of you answered. This is what you said. By hanging rainbow banners and flags, we've demonstrated inclusion and affirmation both within our church and in the broader Laverne community. Our vibrant worship services and spiritual formation offerings. Seeking to become a more anti-racist community through the multi-ethnic art display, which is now up in the narthex, hallelujah. <laughs> Including all ages, welcoming wiggles, growing in membership with families of all shapes and sizes donating hundreds of pounds of fresh produce from our community garden to the local food bank, preparing meals to feed the unhoused each month, and I calculated it, it's about 1,800 dinners y'all have made this year. Baking and delivering bread to those who are confined at home or undergoing medical treatment, I guesstimate about 480 loaves of bread delivered this year offering the gift of incredible music in our community and globally through choir concerts, fostering relationships beyond ec economic status with a sense of mutuality, writing to the president to advocate for ceasefire in Gaza. You named Peace Camp, the Rhodes Scholarship, service projects that provided essential donations for the House of Ruth, David and Margaret, Roynan Elementary, Hope for Home, and more. So church, we have much to rejoice. And I'm not suggesting we slap on a superficial Sunday smile, but let's consider Paul's stoic influence in Philippians. Let's heed Andre's call to live into joy as we work toward liberation. As we think of who we are as a faith community and the work we've accomplished, may we celebrate all these things, amen. We're so glad that you listened to the message today. If you're looking for an open and affirming, peace-loving and justice-seeking congregation, consider visiting us for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. We'd love to meet you.